Hey guys, Paul McLean here. Welcome to the Monday Morning Wake Up Podcast. Excited that you're on today. In fact, I'm, I'm glad that every week you join and I hope this serves you and serves you well. Every week, my desire is the same. It's to provide significant value to you so you can go out there and make this week better than last week. And my desire is to do that in the form of having a guest that can really speak to you and provide value for you. And today, guys, I got to be honest with you. No, um, I guess shame on anybody that's been on my the podcast before, but today I've got my favorite guest. He's one of my best friends. We've been friends for 17 plus years. Um, somebody that I recruited when I was 19, he was 18. And then over a period of time, you know, he helped recruit me to stay into the business because of, you know, these, these, these late night talks while we're out there running appointments for 14 hours on end. And he's like, dude, what are you thinking? Yes, you had nine no shows, keep going. And you know, we just really kind of help, you know, speak life into each other and build this business. And, um, in the beginning, I did my best to provide and sow seed into into his business and life based off of the, what I was producing. And then over the last several years, I'm positive I've learned more from him than he's learned from me. And it was pretty cool. The last like week, we got a chance to spend some time together with our families, and it was it was something that you know I, I, we've been best friends for a long time. We've built a good business together, but to see him with with his wife and the kids as well, and just the overall man that he is, it's like, man, this is somebody that, you know, anybody, it would be a good choice for them to follow him, his character, his attributes, and what he's got. And so today I'm excited to have somebody that's gone out there and he's helped 20,000 families in a month as an organization, which, I mean, nobody does that. I mean, that's like the top one or two people in the entire insurance industry that's ever done that. He's been Hall of Fame producer multiple times, and he's helped a lot of people go out and earn the integrity partnership. And so I'm excited to have my good buddy on today, Andrew Taylor. Thank you for joining, bro. Yeah, dude. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for doing this every week. This podcast has helped a ton of agents and highlighted a bunch of things that people have done that I've taken from. Uh, One thing I want to say, dude, is if you're in this business or if you're in business at all, It's constantly, at least for me, and I believe this is universal to everybody. It's a, it's constantly a roller coaster and finding certain principles to, to live by can help get you through those. That's what we've done. And Paul and I were hanging out a few weeks ago. Uh, Our, our families and kids were hanging out and we were talking about the, the key phrases that we, um, lived by that we took from conferences and trainings that got us through the hard times and kind of when things got good, kept us um, humble and we we didn't get too excited. And Paul, there was one I forgot. You remember saying this, nothing's ever as good as you think it is and nothing's ever as bad as you think it is. Is that what what it was? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. So we're going to go over these with you guys today which I'm super excited about. Well, dude, but, I th- hey, real quick about that one there. Um, there's like a couple that now that you say that, I think are kind of linked. And, and this is the stuff that repetition through like principles and concepts will really kind of help elevate your thought process. So let me just first encourage everybody as, as I give it back to Andrew to kind of go through that. And then we're going to go back and, you know, tell some stories. And this is going to be fun. When we spoke about this last week, we were at Disneyland. The kids were all they weren't really waiting in lines because we had this great service that helped us out with those lines. But, but, you know, we thought like, man, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a good time and a great teaching point. This is like back to basics of blocking and tackling guys. I encourage you to grab a pen and a piece of paper an iPad. This is one of the things that you want to take notes on. And then if you can say, Hey man, this, this right here can become a part of my business philosophy. Like if I start creating and building my business around this foundational principle, maybe I can build it to a higher level than I could ever thought I could have built it. And that's what these things did for us. And so I would just encourage you guys to grab something real quick and um, prepare yourself with an expectation that you're going to get something that's going to really elevate your game this week. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I think we should go over, we, we made a list of these, but the number one thing I think would be talking to everybody about this industry and something that I had written down was when when something goes from your from your mind to your heart, then the way you communicate with people changes and you also don't care what people think about you. So when you really believe this is going to help people and this this has to do with clients and it has to do with recruiting as well. And the reason I say that is because I was working at the grocery store. I was shy. 
Uh, nobody would have thought I wanted to sell insurance. One of the checkers gave me a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I read, and it talked about getting into sales to, to uh, um, be able to make more money to be able to invest in real estate. But the fact that somebody brought it up to me, which who introduced me to Paul, if they didn't bring it up to me, then we wouldn't be here on this podcast. And I'm saying that because there's people in your life, you can't prejudge where they're at or how good they're going to do. And one thing I've found is usually you'll be surprised at the people who do really well. You'll be like, whoa, I, I didn't see that coming. I talked to the Uber driver and he wrote, I, I just talked to someone. They hired their Uber driver. He wrote like 30 policies in a week. And it's like, whoa, imagine if I didn't do that. So don't prejudge people. Um, Paul, you want to you want to go through the list of these? Yeah, I'll, I'll hit the first one. And, and to Andrew's point, guys, like ask yourself this question. So I always think when it's, it's important when you're listening to anything to take notes, but also to create notes, right? So you're taking notes like don't prejudge. The, the creating note, the making the note would be, man, who have I not yet reached out to that might be the next success story with Family First Life? And then that'll help trigger this actual active thought process to go out and find the person that you might need to reach out to. And so as you make notes or, or take notes, guys, create and make notes as well in line with that. And um, and Andrew, you know, the funny thing is when you when every time you talk about your Rich Dad, Poor Dad book, I think about like how literal you are. And I think that somebody on here needs to be maybe a little bit more literal with the things they're hearing, right? Like if somebody said, invest 1500 bucks a week in leads, like you didn't think it was a joke like you literally did it and um i remember going to your house and it was that you had no carpet in your house just concrete floors and you had like two staff members <laughs> like, in like, there dude, in there i'm thinking like dude well, like why don't you get carpet and you're like dude it's lead money bro it's lead money and i remember thinking like this is before we you know we were married and stuff and i said you know like what do you tell the girls that come over like about your concrete floor i felt like i i just stepped into you know a prison and you're like, I just tell them I'm underneath construction. And I remember going over there like a year later and being like, dude, there's still no carpet. What do you tell them now? And you're like, it's just a long construction project. But you're investing yeah. back in your business. You took a little. But dude, man, what's funny about that, what's funny about that is this, and this is something I learned. If your self-worth is tied up in your in your personal stuff, then it's really easy to be unhappy. But if oh, your you self-worth... If your self-worth is tied up in the 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 um your work ethic and the amount of people you can help and doing the right thing and t doing what you tell yourself you're going to do which is a million little things every day which should be on this list waking up at a certain time eating a certain thing everybody says tomorrow I'm going to do this 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 and this just doing that if your self-worth is tied up into that, no one can ever take that away from you. And I found yeah. that, that that brings a lot of happiness aside from money. Take money, everything out of, the, out, of, out of the picture. And then delayed gratification, man. The longer you wait for something, the better it is when you get it. Mm -hmm. So I was big on that. And I still am till this day. It's like I could... I could invest and do certain things and delay s some reward. But then instead of helping, you know, 2000 families a month, we can help 20,000 families a month. And there's things that if I could go back, I would have done different, which we could talk about later on here, but I would have been more aggressive for sure. Well, dude, let me, let me ask you this. Cause uh, the first point you made was when it goes from your, your head to your heart. Okay. And, and what you just said is, is connected to that. So you weren't tying, you know, the way you felt good about yourself, right? Your identity wasn't tied to your title or possessions. Meaning that if you hit VP, you're a top producer, or you had a ton of money in the bank account, or you had a beautiful house, none of that was doing it for you. Your, your fulfillment and how you felt good about yourself, happiness was tied to serving clients and serving agents, which is what you said about going from your head to your heart. My, my question yep. is, how, how do you, how did you how did you do that? Right. So it wasn't in, in possessions or titles. It was in people. You loved people. 
what helped you do that? Because people get it conceptually, but was there something that helped you re- renew your mind to see it that way where you could get it into your heart? Like, how did you do that? There's a couple things that I did, but um, the first thing is, and I've talked about this a lot. My dad died when I was 10 years old. My mom ha- was raising four kids by herself with no job, no life insurance. And Paul, you know, my mom, she's a, she's a awesome person and mm-hmm. she gave us a great life. She, she, she worked, I don't know, three jobs and provided everything we needed, which was awesome. But one of my memories is after my dad died, maybe like I'm probably, I don't know, six months after my mom got a job um, like as like a preschool teacher. She didn't make very much money, but guess who came over six months later? Guess who was at my house? Was an insurance guy? An insurance guy. And he was selling her an insurance policy in case something happened to her that the kids would be, uh, we would be okay. But she barely had any money. But that's how important that was to her at that point in time. So something that helped me take this from just being about money to being about people is remembering that. And when I would sit with a customer, I would do this thing where I'd go, I'm going to pretend like this is my mom. I'm going to talk to this person like this is my mom. Um, And I would, I told every single customer that story. So they, they knew that I was doing this. It wasn't about money. It was about, I was going to do whatever was going to help them. Now, Paul, you know, I was not the best closer. At least I wasn't a smooth talker, but they don't care. And oh yeah, that was one of them too. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the things that we wrote that we had put on this list of of things that we wrote down that helped us. So if you're if you're with a client or if you're with an agent, they don't care how how much you know. They don't care how sharp you look. They don't care about your car. They don't care how much knowledge you have unless they know you care about them. So one thing we did, or I did, is I would tell everybody that story. And for people who don't have a story, they know someone who has a story that they can tell. So I would tell every single person I sat down with, um, Bob and Mary, I got into the industry because this happened to my family. And this is what my mom went through. And six months later, which it was too late, but there was an insurance guy at the house and she got a life insurance policy. So using stories. Now, the other thing I learned, Paul, is I would always think of um, if I sat down with a customer, I would always imagine like a brick wall in between me and the customer. And I would always do these things that I would, in my mind, remove a brick from that wall, which means they're trusting me more. So there were certain things like this. It would be like, okay, I would tell that story. I'd That would remove a couple bricks from that wall. And this is releasing sales pressure. And this goes to recruiting too. But another thing I would do is I would go, hey, Paul, today what we're going to do is we're going to find something that fits your needs and your budget and is going to protect your family if something happens to you. If you don't make it home tomorrow, if you didn't wake up tomorrow, now I'm being specific, then you're fi- you can go to sleep tonight knowing that your family's taken care of. Now, if we find something that fits your needs and your budget and is going to protect your family, we're going to see if we can get you qualified right here today. Does that sound fair enough? Now, now they're going to say yes. And then I'm going to say, if I can't do any of those things, then I'll be out of here in 10 to 15 minutes and it's no hard feelings. Now, to me, that's removing another brick. They're going, okay, this guy's not going to try to strong arm sell me or close me because if it doesn't do these things, it's not going to work. So um, like that, dude, that in, in all these things that I was sincere about, if I couldn't help him, I didn't want him to get a policy. And communicating from your heart, not just, hey, how much commission can I make? That's so good. It's almost like I think 
Uh, the one thing I want to I spotlight real quick is when you told the story, it did help the client basically see it in a more tangible way. Like your story, they start to see themselves in it. Like what would happen if we, we didn't come home and what, what, you know, would we be in the same situation? So that story, what it does is it paints a picture and then allows the client to live in it. And so it does make a difference as far as evoking emotion for the client. But I think what that story also did was it helped you remind yourself of the value that you're providing that specific client. And it kept it more about them and not about you. And so that story, every time you told it, maybe you went in and it was about you in your mind, like, man, I do need to pay this bill. I do need to take care of this. Cause that's an, that's a normal feeling. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. battles that, but, but reminding yourself of a story or telling a story and having, it's almost like, um, like, so these sayings guys, they were written down and they were part of like my affirmations because I did them every morning. So it would remind me and I would rehearse these thought processes so that way it would help me change my thought process and make it more in alignment with these principles and concepts, right? So one of my affirmations was, I care more about the client than I care about myself. I put them before myself. I, I touch a heart before I ask for a hand. Those are part of my affirmations that, that I still have today that I, that I put in place when I started to hear these principles. And the reason why they're part of my affirmations is I read my affirmations every morning and I wanted my affirmations to be a reminder to renew my mind in such a way where it was more in alignment with success, serving others, loving others, valuing others, and going after the abundance that I knew God had set before me. And so the point I want to make to this is, Andrew, the story that you you told them, it helped them, but it also helped you. And in the affirmations that I do every morning, they, 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 they help me speak it into existence, but they also remind me of the person that I want to be, become and the, and the philosophy that I want to live by. And, and that's, this is what we're talking about, man. So it's so, so good. If somebody doesn't have a story, Andrew, they can borrow that story. Like, but everybody knows someone in their family, dude, almost everyone has a story or someone close to them has a story they can use. Yeah. You know, and I remember hearing, um, he was a top producer back at the other company. He, he told his story and, and to me, it, it evokes such a high emotion that I remember listening to his story so many different times that I was able to communicate it with a passion and emotion as if it was my story. And that's the goal because sales is a transfer of thoughts and emotions and ideas where they believe it's their own because you did it in a great effective way. And I think that's just a great way to do that, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's powerful. And I also remember in the beginning hearing somebody say, dude, why don't you read the obituary every morning? And I remember Googling the obituary and reading stories because it would remind me of the value because I had not had a, a significant loss personally at that time. So, so I wanted to, and I understood that concept of you got to, you know, people don't care much, you know, until they know much you care. So I was trying to build that up, you know, and that definitely helps. All right. So let's go into this one here. Um, the one I've got here is, is success happens in the middle. Remember that, that, that saying where if you get too high, you can kind of die. If you get too low, you can kind of die but success happens right in the middle. Yeah. Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah. So, um, what I, what I would find is that, or another way to put that is I would always say you always get what you deserve. It just might take a few weeks to, to figure out what that is. And the first eye-opening experience was when I first started, Paul, you had, you had booked 22 appointments and you no-sold every single one of them. And the next week, you had booked 20 appointments and you sold every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Now, you could have easily said, dude, I'm not doing that again. That was a complete waste. But you didn't. You booked those appointments. So I started to, when I would run appointments, I would do the same thing. And I found that uh, when... When I'm getting my butt kicked, uh, in, and this could be in the field or recruiting or an agent quits or whatever, what I found is instead of getting emotional, speeding up my activity until I break the dry spell that I'm in. And if I'm doing really, really well, because there's weeks where it's like, man, this, this doesn't even seem legal. This is so good. When I'm doing really well, to continue the activity because you can easily get a few chargebacks and have another bad week and 
end up wor- worse off in a few we- weeks when you are now having a really good week. So really what I, the, what I did with that, Paul, is I, al- I just fell in love with the activity and that was my success. So if my goal was to, to run 24 appointments in a week, then that, regardless of what happened in those appointments, that was my success. Now, if I if I ran twenty four, if I only ran six, that would be an unsuccessful week for me, no matter what happened. And that also having my success tied up in just the activity, which kept me in the middle. What it allowed me to do is not compare myself to everybody else, which I think is really easy a, a really easy way to get down. Uh, new agents looking at the leaderboards. Oh, and something else we can add to this list that's coming to mind is behind every overnight success story, there's 10 years of hard work that you haven't seen. And that helped me because I was new in sales and I wasn't really good. But I was comparing myself early on to people who had been in sales for 10, 15, 20 years. And understanding that everybody has to put in that grind, whether it's in this industry or another one, Everybody has to earn that. And that that go that basically helped me go, okay, if I'm not that good right now, as I continue to do this, I'll get better. That's so good. And you know, it's almost like I wanna lift the un the un you know needed weight off somebody's shoulders that's done the same thing with building a business where they look at somebody and think like, Man, I'm just I'm terrible. I'm not any good at this. And you don't realize that some of the person, people you're comparing to, they've been in this insurance industry for, for five, six, seven, nine, ten 10 years, and they built businesses elsewhere. And so when they started and launched here, they were able to kind of take all those years and years of practice that were kind of done in the dark because they weren't done here, which means they were not seen here. But when they came over here, all of a sudden, overnight success. What well, was an overnight success, man? They put in the work and they had the disciplines and, and, and you didn't see the long nights, man, the countless no shows, the countless no sales, the countless chargebacks. And you're basically comparing your, your behind the scenes reel, right? Your everyday, you know, struggles and victories, ups and downs to somebody else's highlight reel, right? Yeah. And so it's like that, that'll kill you, man. You don't gotta, don't focus on somebody else, run the race that, that's set before you. Um, so that, remember that, so I had those 22 sales in a row, 22 appointments. I had my biggest week, but that was following my worst week I'd ever had. The yeah. week prior, I had nine no-shows in a row and, and nine appointments was the most I'd ever booked in a day. And every single one of them no-showed me. And and what that taught me is like that law of large numbers is is true or you can't beat the numbers. The numbers can't beat you is true unless you start beating yourself up. So like mm-hmm. I could have easily got my attitude to drop into a negative state and started to deal with self-doubt, fear. What if this doesn't work out? Maybe I'm not any good. And then the appointments that were set before me that were going to turn the next week over and make it a great week, I self-sabotaged and screwed them up because I'd already made this new verdict in my mind that I'm not any good. This ain't going to work. And then I just support that with evidence that I create through my communication and the way I hold myself. And, um, dude, there was many times, Andrew, I remember calling you and I remember us having this conversation mutually many times. We're like, dude, I got smoked today, man. And mm-hmm. you'd always be like, well, dude, you're set up for a good day tomorrow then. Like it, that's a good thing. Cause that means tomorrow you're going to freaking crush it. And that's how it worked. But it was that reminder that we gave each other that we didn't allow us to get down that path of negativity, self doubt and fear that would cause us to sob- sabotage the great day that was in fact set before us because the reality is the numbers can't beat you and you cannot beat the numbers unless you beat yourself up. And so uh, I love that, man. All right. So this is, yeah, and I would write that down. You can't, you can't beat the numbers and the numbers can't beat you, which means you can't, if you try to s- cheat the system and, and cut corners and run five appointments a week, you're not going to beat the numbers. And in return, if you run, the amount of appointments you're supposed to run, the numbers can't beat you. They can't win. You're going to win. And I think that gives to me, guys, as we go to the next one, that gave me some some kind of like weird sense of security and peace. When yeah. all my my family was saying, you're going into sales, commission, 
that's so unpredictable. Don't you want a steady job? That 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 phrase there, that principle there, it gave me security and peace because I knew that I had a ratio. And so every week I could actually call out what income was going to hit my bank account because I could dictate how many leads would lead to how many dials, to how many appointments book to sit to sell and so so the ratio was there and it gave me security amidst some of those rocky you know troubling waters and so yeah, that that's a that's a great one this hey paul before you yeah. before you go there because you referenced this and i want to talk about it having a running buddy and not only having a running buddy having the right running buddy so i would have a bad day and I would have Paul who was in the he was in the field running appointments doing the same thing. So I had somebody that I could bounce things off that were happening to me. And vice versa, occasionally, which was funny cuz Paul was the top sales guy every year or a lot of years, he would call me and and he'd be like, "Dude, I can't close anything. Like, what do you say when someone says this?" And I'm like, "Dude, what are you talking about? Like you've done this like a thousand times which shows you even if you're really good this can get in your head Mm -hmm. that's what it's all it's all this is all in your head and he would be like well what do you say and i'm like dude you told me what to say this is what i would say if somebody says x y and z now if you don't have a running buddy then it's going to be a very lonely business now this is why with ffl now people that are doing uh dials on zoom together they have a group of people that are supporting them and they're all going through the same thing at the same time, which is extremely powerful. So if you're not on a Zoom dial team or dialing with other people, then I think you're crazy. You're also losing uh, peer pressure from a group that will make you better. And you're also losing being accountable to accountable to somebody, which we all know makes us all better. But having a running buddy... And what I mean by having the right running buddy is they have to be someone who has a a positive mindset about life. Because if you have the wrong one, they'll just pull you down, you know? And you got to be real careful who you talk to. There's people in this industry that I consider friends that I love very much that I will not talk to because they're so negative. I don't need the negative seeds of doubt planted in my mind especially if there's nothing I can do about a negative circumstance. So that's good, dude. That is, that is money. Um, all right. So this one was probably one of my, my favorite ones. Um, because there's, it, when I say it, there's so much to like so much value in it and so much you could take from it. So this one was the dog in the hunt has no fleece. Like how did that apply yeah. to you and how did you use that? Well, to dude, build your business? It, apl- it applied to me more than ever when I got my integrity deal. Because everybody everybody knows if you get an integrity deal, you get paid a lot of money. And it's a it was more money than I ever thought I would ever make in my life. Okay. And what it did is it it made me step off the gas pedal a little bit. And it made me realize that the happiest I've ever been was when I was working the hardest, making the biggest impact, the busiest, and my self-worth was tied into um, my work ethic. And what's funny, dude, is all these things we're going over, and again, write that down, dog in the hunt has no fleas. All these things we're going over, write these down and apply these because I had written all these things down and I had I had read in the every day in the morning and once I hit this certain level of success I had stopped doing that. And what's funny is I'm going back to doing that again that to doing all these things again now because I realize and this might be different for some people but money doesn't make you happy. It makes things fun, it allows you to do cool things for other people and cool things for your family. And I would rather have money than not have money, but it's not gonna it's not gonna make you happy every single day just from having money. So the things that I was that I was doing to become successful were the things that were making me happy. Now the other thing is, 
and we would always say this. So dog in the hunt has no fleas. The other version of that is an, an idled mind is the devil's playground is what I would always say. If you don't have anything to do, then your mind is going to wander to places that you shouldn't go. And the example that was given to me and write this analogy down or this story down that I'm going to tell you. So if I'm walking in a dark alley and I'm all by myself, right? I'm going to be really scared if I hear a noise behind a trash can. If I'm walking down a dark alley and I'm with a bunch of other people and let's say I'm with someone who's crazy and let's say I'm with Sean Ruggiero who looks like he's in the movie 300. <laughs> if you, yeah, like that. He does look like that. <laughs> then I kind of want to know what's behind the trash can and I'm kind of excited to see what happens next. So keeping busy but also staying accountable with other people because instead of you thinking something's really bad through counsel, you can figure out that it's normal and it's not that big of a deal. So doing it with a group of people. Um, but dude, bottom line, man, like we're, we're designed to go hunt and accomplishing something is what I've fit, what I've and and. Uh, doing things better than they've been done before, figuring out a way to do things better than they've been done before, uh, forward progress, making a difference. Uh, all those things, man, have been what really what this is all about. And you don't know that when you're like, man, I just want to make X amount of money and then I'll be set. Mm -hmm. Or if I hit this goal, I'll be set. Well, once you hit all these things, you realize that the the exciting part was the journey like Kobe Bryant's Instagram reel. That's all over Instagram. He's like, dude, waking up at 5 AM. Um, he was like waking up at 5 AM when you're tired and you don't want to go to practice and you go to practice anyways, and you're sore and you're grinding every single day He's like, that's the dream. And that's what I learned is like, what we're doing right now, that is the dream. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in the field right now, helping a bunch of people, uh, you're, you're busy, you're recruiting, you're meeting new people, you're building new relationships. That is the dream. So that's my thoughts on that. Dude, the funny thing is, um, when you don't understand that the dream is in the duty, the duty of doing the daily activities and stuff, right? Um, I think when you get to the destination, you realize how empty it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I'm a pretty result oriented guy. You know, I like, I like to, I want to win. I'm competitive. I want to, I want to see the victory. Um, and so I remember, you know, thinking like once I get to this level, then it would be, it, it would feel so good. And it never does. It never does. Dude, remember, remember we were at like 60% contracts and we were like, dude, can you imagine what, it would be like if we were at 110% contracts mm -hmm. and, and all we did was train new agents. And then like somewhere down the road, we end up at 145% commission with FFL. And you forget it. And, and we forgot that whole thing we ever talked about mm -hmm. along the way. Yeah, dude. I, I think that for one, I like how you, where you went with that, Andrew, the dog in the hunt has no fleas. I didn't expect that you, you went to the success like having so much success and then all of a sudden almost like being aware of the fleas that you've got because you've got this success and realizing that the success doesn't bring this clean bathing water that keeps you flea free. It actually heightens yeah. and makes you aware of the fact that you have fleas unless you're busy. And, um, and I, and I love that saying that, man, if you, if you love people, you'll use money. If you love money, you'll use people. And when you're chasing just that dollar and you see all that success and you get there, I think that's the emptiest time you can feel because now it's like, what do I do? And if it's still about the money, then that's when you start using people to go out there and get more money. And the money's never going to fulfill because it's not what we were created for. And and I think that um, I just like how you went there. Dude. I didn't expect that. I, for me, the dog in the hunt had his own fleas was like, I thought about when we started Family First Life and in that season that I was in where... Dude, at that same year, 
Um, my mom got diagnosed with, with having uh, intracranial hypertension and this brain disease called Chiari. So she had all these shunts and things put in her brain. I was the only one that was self-employed, even though we were like <laughs> desperately trying to get this business to get going because it was you know, disaster, no leads, no carriers, no nothing. And going back and forth to the hospital, hoping like, man, hope my mom doesn't die. And then at the same time, going through the legal stuff that we had to go through, um, going through no leads and trying to figure out like, what am I going to do to, to, to make money if I got no leads? And, and realizing that any time I sat there, and I remember that also that saying was no white space, right? There's no white space. Mm -hmm. Think no white space. when I had the white space, how I could just like, I, that, I, that would just kill me, man. Cause I would start looking through a filter of fear and like, what if this happens and that happens and all that. But when I was in the hunt, just booking appointments, creatively coming up with solutions, that's where the annual reviews was kind of birthed was in that season where we yeah. had no leads. God's always got something good in all the bad. But if you're in the hunt, it'll be revealed. That seed that will take you to a higher level. But when you're not in the hunt, you're standing still. You don't see the seed that God's got for you. All you see is the the chaos, the turmoil, the adversity, the struggle, the setback. And and um, and so I, I, I love how you went th that way because I never really kind of thought about but it But it like can that. go both ways. It can, yeah. It definitely can. Yeah. yeah that, that was for good. For sure. All right. So let's look at um, – the sick and tired of being sick and tired, dude. <laughs> I heard the, like an old guy, an old old coach that was kind of giving us some feedback as we got started in the business. And the way he would say it was just like, it caused you to remember it. But um, it, talk about that one, man. The sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, this applies to anything. So like, I'm, I'm going to give you an example of um, like – a few years ago, remember Sean told me I looked like a wood tick because I gained like fifty pounds. <laughs> I remember him saying he looked like a wood tick, but I'm, I don't, I don't doubt him telling you that you look like one too, maybe. Yeah, no, he called. He told me he goes, "Dude, did you eat your other self?" <laughs> and <laughs> because so I was in this season of my life, which I was like, okay, it was all about, you know. Let's go out and let's have fun and let's drink and let's do all these things. And as you get older, you realize your body changes. You can't do that. You can't do that forever. Eat whatever you want forever. Dude, I gained like 50 pounds. And for my frame, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of weight because I'm skinny, you know? And uh, I would always say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my diet tomorrow. I'm going to change my diet tomorrow. And, this can, and I'm telling you this story because this can be applied to anything. Mm -hmm. And then one day, and by the way, I used to smoke cigarettes and chew tobacco. At the same so, time. A couple times I did at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was there for those now, times. Now I I I made the I I did this thing one day where I go, okay, dude, I I saw a picture of me. And sometimes you don't really see your own body changing because you see yourself every mm -hmm. single day. But I saw a picture of me with a bunch of other people and I didn't recognize myself. It's like, what the heck? So I did something that was really hard for me to do. I went to someone who was in really good shape and I was like, hey, what's your diet? I want to follow your diet. Now, while I did this, I also wrote down all the things I was sick and tired of doing because I just hit this point where I was like, I'm, I'm done. And I wrote down all the things that were pulling me away from my goals. So I wrote down smoking. I quit smoking. Like just cold turkey, done. I quit chewing tobacco, cold turkey, done. Uh, I, ch I completely changed my diet where six days a week I ate, I ate exactly what I was designed to eat. And I would take agents in the field with me. I would be dialing with agents and I would bring a cooler of food everywhere. And a funny story is my mom would help me meal prep. And, you know, I've always been a, a big mama's boy. And I remember I was telling her the other day, I gave her specific things that I could eat and it would all be measured so I can try to lose weight. And one day she put a burrito in there. <laughs> I go, mom. This ain't on it. She goes, I know. I figured you'd be hungry, though, from just eating all this plain food. <laughs> but anyways, I was like, I was eating specific food and uh, stopped doing all these things because I hit this point where 
I, I was so done. Now, if that, what is that in your life? Because th- really, this podcast is about how can these things apply to you. Mm-hmm. So, what what is it that can help you? And what's weird is all of the things bleed into other things. So I would stay up all night, and I was sick and tired of getting up late. So I started to go to bed early. I stop. I I stopped and hopefully we can be uh, raw on here because I think weed's legal now. I stopped smoking weed before I went to bed, which helped me get up earlier. I stopped doing all these specific things that were bleeding into other habits. And what's crazy, dude, is my sales went through the roof. I actually read something. I don't know if this is true, but it was true for me. If you exercise, your sales will go up like 30% just because you're communicating in a different way because you feel better about yourself. Yeah, I can see that. Now, the other funny thing I did, and all of these things bleed into each other, but the other thing I did is I I would meet people at the gym in the morning because you, you talk about running buddies for me to be accountable 6 a.m. Me and Ben Smith would meet there and whoever wasn't there by six would owe the other person a hundred dollars. So some days I would be running into the gym at like 559 sprinting from the parking lot because I didn't want to pay him a hundred dollars. Um, but dude, what is it? And, and the thing about this man is like, it's easy to go, Hey, I want to, I want to change X, Y, Z tomorrow. It could be I'm I'm sick and tired of not hitting my goals, um, but you have to literally do it right now. You can't. I can't go. Hey, I'm gonna have one more uh, cheat meal tonight, and I'm gonna start tomorrow. It right. has to start right now. It has to start right now. Um, but dude, all of those things, all those things I changed, bled into one another, and then completely changed my whole mindset. And completely changed my whole business. You saw how fast everything changed. Mm-hmm. I was an okay producer with a small team. And then I go, dude, I'm sick of being an okay producer with a small team. That's Let's so change good. all these different things. Dude, the funny thing is <clears throat> we spent a lot of time together. And I remember seeing the pictures when you know you had gained the weight. And dude, that was the heaviest I had been too. You know? Yeah. But, I could show it yeah. to you. know, But, but like... And then yeah, when you started meal prepping, I had my mom start meal prepping. <laughs> I think your mom's a better chef than mine. Cause it, <laughs> dude, I remember my wife being like, babe, you're going to eat that. You know? Cause I just told her, I said, it's gotta be healthy. And my mom took me very literal. I mean, there was like no salt or nothing on it. It was just like <laughs> raw shit, like just chicken with no seasoning and friggin' <laughs> brown rice four days four days you know four times a day but but that goes back to that saying that i also remember night I, I didn't write this one down but it, when you're talking about that it's like dude a lot of the, the things that you tweaked and adjusted i was watching just like you're watching like it's a whole thing that in the next five years you're going to be where you're going to be based off the five friends you spend the most time with in, in the books you read, right? And like that's such a true statement. As you're talking about that, I'm kind of going back and thinking like, I remember when 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 Andrew, the picture you're talking about, I remember seeing myself in the picture because obviously, when you, you know you know how you are. Don't act like, like, when you look at a photo, the person always goes to themselves and looks you first. You always look at yeah, yourself. Yeah, you look at yourself first. So when you're talking about yeah. that photo, I remember looking at myself thinking like, and my shirt was tucked in. And so I could see things that normally I couldn't see when my shirt was tucked in. I remember seeing that picture. Dude. It, was a, it was like a, a checkered shirt. And it was the biggest I've ever been. And um, But that's how it works. So so one of the, 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 I guess, times to make a note right now is is who in your life is bringing you down or helping you validate and submit the bad habit that you want to get rid of to take you to where you want to go. Because that is the case, right? And And who do you have that's in proximity that if you spent more time with would help elevate your life, whether that's personally, financially, spiritually, physically, you know, cause everybody's got different strengths and gifts and weaknesses, but, but what does your sphere of influence look like? Because it'll directly influence where you're going to be in the next six, 12 months and year, you know, no doubt about it. Um, all right. This one was probably my favorite one. 
because I think it's so applicable to this business. Um, the, it's, it's, you have to act your way into feeling, not feel your way into action. You remember that one? Dude, I remember. Yeah, but that was hard for me, man. I, uh, I was scared to dial in front of people because I thought I was going to get hung up on and I didn't want people to hear me dial because I thought I was so bad at it. So for me, that one came with really high activity, which boosted my confidence. So with really, and, and getting a few wins through activity helped me start to act that way. Now, one thing I'll tell you about that, Paul, is this. I needed to get around people that were better than me, which was really uncomfortable for me to do. Okay. And I think it's probably uncomfortable for everybody to do, to get around people that are uh, doing better than they are. Now, the best thing I ever did, which this goes into that topic is I, I I made a goal of okay if I want to get if I want to be around Sean Mike and all these people I have to be somebody they're going to want to be around so I started to act different and I started to do things different on purpose so that I can get into a different circle where I can learn from other people so one of the questions I asked is Am I somebody that the top producers would want to be around? Well, I was I was up all night. I I wasn't serious about anything. I wasn't think I wasn't being intentional about any impact I could make. And I'm thinking, why would they want to be friends with me? And the the real truth, Paul, is if you become friends with people that are really successful, then you have more exposure to them and what you were talking about how uh, like the people around you will, you'll change your behaviors and your habits based on the people around you. The more exposure you have to those people, the more you'll change your behaviors and habits. And also to that note, if you change, your team will change. So when I made all those changes, all the guys on my team that were just kind of in the middle, not real serious, they became serious like I was they started doing things I was doing. They and and then it just had this exponential growth in our team because it was bleeding down into everybody. But act your act your way into feeling. What I did is I I acted my way into somebody people would want to be around by changing things I was doing. And dude, I have a lot of friends that I don't talk to much anymore. Dude, I stopped hanging out with them which was hard to do at first because it wasn't going anywhere. Like it would be a bunch of the, the conversations were, were not moving me in the direction of my goal. And so I, I, I stopped talking to them and I started acting like somebody that successful people would want to be around. Well, dude, I mean, <clears throat> for one, I think that's one of the best answers to that because I think everybody on here, Andrew, they know kind of what they want. They know what goals they have. They want, you know, and, and sometimes it's general. Like, man, I want to have more time with the family. I want to have more money. I want to, I want to become a, you know, help 20 families a month. I want to become a whole, you know, most people have an idea of what they want. And a lot of people on here, they know how to get there as well. You know, there's a roadmap, but most people, the reason why they don't take those steps on the how to get there is because they don't understand who they need to become to get there. And and so I think having some who goals, like who do you need to be that's going to, you know, put you in a circle with other people that are where you want to be, want to be with, right? And so those who goals, like if I want to go out and, and help 40 families a month, who does that person look like? They're, they're disciplined, they're confident, you know, they, they do what they say they're going to do, they're integrous, all those things. And so Understanding like who do you need to be and then having that be something that checks your behavior each day. Did I behave in such a way that lines up with who I need to become to hit what I want to hit as far as a chief objective? And, and that's what you're talking about. It's like having those who goals, like who do I need to be and become 
where other people that are where I want to be would want to be with. In essence, like my behaviors kind of match the top successful people. Who does that look like? And and that kind of will shift and change your your direction because your identity leads to your choices 100% of the time. You know, if you know who you are, it's easy to know what to choose to do. And and that's what you're talking about, man. And that that's that's I didn't expect that either from you, <laughs> which is really good, man. Like the who. My my thought on it was you know, once I start doing the thing I don't feel like doing, eventually I start feeling like doing it, right? Like I remember not wanting to dial and, and like being like, I don't want to dial. But the moment that I said, hey, once I, I, I get in at 730, if I say I'm going to dial, I'm going to dial. So creating a non-negotiable where I didn't engage in how I felt in that moment, I just took the massive action. And the crazy thing is after you started taking the action, you kind of feel like doing it, right? And it's no different than going to the gym for anybody on here. You've probably experienced this before. You do not feel like going to the gym. But man, once you go to the gym, right, and you go amidst the fact that you feel and you act your way into feeling, after so many you know months and stuff, like you start feeling like going to the gym. It's actually harder and you feel worse about not going to the gym. You feel better about going to the gym because it's who you are and what you've done. It's the same thing. If you can act your way into feeling long enough, eventually the feeling will be what's left. And now you're moved by what's familiar, which is the feeling of doing that thing that you didn't feel like doing before. And so I, I think that's so applicable. I remember, um, we got one more wrap up. Andrew, I remember, um, hearing this from, uh, Dave Anderson. He said, when you, when you, when you wake up in the morning and the alarm clock clock goes off, like most people have hit snooze before, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think everybody, I think, I don't think nobody on here is like, not me, dude. Like I, I don't hit snooze. I'm disciplined. I think everybody's hit snooze before. Heck, I hit it this morning just to be open and honest with you, and I was mad about it. But when, when you hit snooze, he said, if you just ask yourself, like, how are you going to feel in an hour if you hit snooze? And then act right now based off of that answer. So if you say, if I hit snooze in an hour, I'm going to feel like crap, you're more likely to not hit it. And then you say, if I get up right now, how am I going to feel in an hour from now? I'm going to feel great. And when he said that, I said, that's, that's, that's a, a great way to kind of help, like, really suppress the feeling and choose to do the thing that, you know, you want to do and you need to do to get you to where you want to go, you know, because feelings are fleeting. And I think, dude, that's what keeps most people bound in this perpetual cycle of getting what they've always gotten, which is what they don't want, is just moving from feelings and emotions. And so I think the action part is... It's beautiful. Um, I'll give it to you, dude. What's the la- what's the last one that you wanna you wanna highlight? Well, dude, how about I'll highlight the the ones I still have, so people can write them down, and we'll gloss over them really quick. Okay, okay? let's do that. Uh, get it. So get obsessed. I always said you got to get obsessed to really blow this thing up. And would you rather? Uh, I was on the pace of where I was going to have to be in the field the rest of my life because I was just halfway in. Um, So I got obsessed for two years and set myself up for the rest of my life, at least to not have to worry about things financially for my situation. Uh, When you're, when you're with your family, be with your family 100%. And when you're at work, be at work 100% and don't be in the middle because that's how you screw work and you screw your family. Um, it's good. Let's see here. Nothing was ever as good as, as you think it is. And nothing's ever as bad as it th- as you think it is. We kind of, we kind of hit on that briefly, but when things are bad, it's not really that bad. If you compare it, uh, with the right perspective, which one day I was complaining about being no showed. This was when Haiti got hit by a hurricane. Sean called me and goes, dude, you're, you're like crying. Like you sound like you, you sound like you know, the world's ending and you had a few people no show you and people are looking for their family members under rocks in Haiti. And he, and then he used his famous line, have some respect for yourself. And ever, ever since that day, I changed the way I looked at this to where it was, I get to do this instead of having a job I didn't want and how lucky I am to have this opportunity and I have more people I can help opposed to poor me. Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, either you need the meeting or the meeting needs you. So there's a lot of meetings. There's a lot of trainings. I've been to every meeting and training I could possibly be, probably thousands. 
I've heard the same thing over and over again. But if I looked at it as if it was just for me, it would be a waste of time sometimes. But if I looked at it as there's new people that haven't heard this before, then it's not a waste of time. And this is what I've told myself recently, Paul. You got to be the person that a new agent needs. I'm sorry. You got to be the person that you needed when you were a new agent. And it's easy to get to forget what it's like to being a new agent. So you go to the meetings because you got to be the person that that new person that wants to pay their bills. They want to make that difference in their life. They want to take their kids on special trips and do special things and spend more time with them or whatever their goal is. You have to be that person that you needed then now and not forget about it. Uh, We have fourth quarter magic, which we have thousands of stories of things Mm -hmm. that have happened in the fourth quarter when most people would quit, but you don't, you continue. And if we had more time, we would go over them. But I probably wouldn't be here without fourth quarter magic because some of my biggest sales were made when it was 9.30, 10 p.m. And most people would have gone home, but I went and knocked on some door of someone that I couldn't get a hold of and made the biggest sale of my career, which changed everything for me. Uh, Having the promotion guidelines taped to your your bedroom. Now, this might sound crazy, but Paul did this. I know I did this. Mm -hmm. I've always had the guidelines taped next to my bed. So I knew every few months what I needed to get promoted. And it chunked down goals for me to where it wasn't this massive goal. It kind of created like a staircase for me. Hit this, then hit this, then hit this, then hit this. But on top of that, your commission level goes up. As you hit those, uh, having a burning desire to win. Uh, The the people that I know, and I, I can speak for myself as well, they we've had a burning desire, which means there's times where I was having dreams about recruiting and phone scripts. And Nicole, my wife, would be like, dude, what is wrong with you? She would think she, sometimes she would be she would almost get like she told me this one time. She goes, I'm almost jealous because you're so obsessed with insurance. Now. I had to go there. I had to get obsessed and go there to get here. And the good news is, is you only have to do it for a little bit. But I had this burning desire, dude, not to lose. Like if there was leads in Compton, I was going. If there was leads in places that even at that time when I was running appointments, I had never been to Compton except in the movie straight out of Compton I saw. I was scared to go run appointments, but I had this burning desire to go, dude, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to do things that most people won't do. And no matter what happens, I'm not going to give up. Now, if you don't have that burning desire, you got to figure it out. You got to figure something out that will motivate you like that. Because without it, I don't know if it gets you through the hard days. Having a T chart, which was grabbing a piece of paper, drawing a T on it on the left putting down all the things you want on the right of it, putting down all the things you're willing to give up to get it. And if you can't come up with something that's equally uh, exchangeable for what you want, then you have to cross out what you want. So the example I would give myself is if I said I wanted a Mercedes Benz brand new, a really cool one, then on the right side, I would put... uh, I'm willing to travel more. I'm willing to see more people. I'm willing to do more meetings out of state. I'm willing to be away from home more. And if I wasn't willing to do those things, then I would cross out the Mercedes Benz and I would put down like a 2005 Kia Rio with roll-up windows. And then on the other side, I would put, I don't want to leave my zip code and I don't want to work more than 20 hours a week, but that actually makes more sense or it's equally exchangeable for that goal. So for everything you want, what are you going to give up temporarily to get that? I was very detailed down to, I want to write X amount in premium. This is how many dials I'm willing to make a week. This is how many appointments I'm willing to make per week. This is where I'm willing to travel to. And I still have my T charts, which I'm actually redoing now at this point in my life. 
which I'm excited about. But I have the original ones, which one of them was recruit 10 people. Was was And then I put on the other side what I was going to do to recruit 10 people. I was going to hire staff. I was going to do all these different things. So being extremely detailed. Um, let's see here. Uh, I think that's it, bro. Oh, dude, there's there, there's so much to that, man. This could be a podcast where we could go on for a couple hours because I believe we've almost kind of not served every principle the way they they can be served to really get that in your mind. But you know, go go to work as you as you look at these principles. Don't just be something that you say makes sense, man. That's good. Well, okay, that's great. But we want it to be impactful. We want it to make a difference because it made a difference for us. It made a difference for me. It made a difference for Andrew. And it was something that as we, as we, you know, looked at these, you know, I remember, you know, hearing this quite a bit also like at night after you podcast, went to a conference, sales training, had your day of activity, man, at night, man, just sit there and reflect and kind of go through these things and say, okay, how can I make this more applicable for me? Right. How can I go out there and apply this to, to my business? You know, how did I go out there and use fourth quarter magic this week, you know, today, did I use fourth quarter magic or did I kind of drop the ball in the fourth quarter? If you did, okay. I mean, we all have, but, but how can you make this applicable where it's on the forefront of your mind and it could actually drive you to the next level of success that lays before you. And, um, and, you know, I love what you said, Andrew, like, you know, where you're at right now is, is to at a position where you've gone through things like everybody on here, you're, you're at a place now in your journey of life or what have you, there's some things that you've gone through, you've conquered, you've overcome. You know, if you're lacking any kind of encouragement or drive or desire, go back and serve your former self. Help the person that you used to be. And if you want to be refreshed, go refresh others. Go encourage others. A lot of times we're looking for the thing for ourselves, but it's found in going out there and serving our former self. And and that's what leads you to realize that, man, this is what feels good. And um, and I just believe as you started the call in the podcast, Andrew, I want to wrap it up. Like if it can go from your head to your heart, everything will change. It just will. Like the things that need to be revealed will be revealed. The things that need to be uncovered will be uncovered. And, um, you know, that's serving a client and reminding yourself of the value there and also serving the agent. You know, I remember going out there and in that first year, Andrew, we had, we hit top 10 in the company. And I remember going across stage and feeling, you know, pretty good that, man, I, I put in a lot of work and it feels good to have some accolades when you know that you were, you know, I don't even remember my dang twenties for the most part, because it was just nonstop. It felt good. But then I remember watching you cross stage and, and just dude being like choked up, not because I did it for you by any means, but just because I was a, a, a small speck of sand of in the big ocean that you created that, that I was just somehow a little bit a part of that. It was just like, man, that's what this is about. And that, and that's when it went from my, my heart to my, my head to my heart when it came to the building of the business. And so if you guys can just go out there and realize that, Hey man, today's the day that if you make some of these adjustments, you put some of these philosophies into your routine, into your mind, into your heart, there's no question that you're going to go out there and where you can be in the next you know, 90 days, man, it'll blow your mind. It doesn't have to take 10 years. So you're just a couple of tweaks and a couple of decisions and adjustments away from elevating it to the next level. And I hope these principles, these timeless principles and concepts served you today. So Andrew, man, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for uh, hopping on and serving us today. And uh, the best is yet to come, bro, which is exciting to say. Likewise, bro. Thank you guys for having me. See you guys. All right, guys. Be strong. Stay steadfast. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. What's going on guys? You know what time it is. We're giving away some leads. We're giving four lucky people 250 bucks worth of leads. All you had to do was just comment on this video that's just playing right here. So that means that you can comment on this video and be entered to win into next week's drawing. So leave a comment right now. Without further ado, let's see who won this week. First winner is David Dunning. Thanks guys. Great stuff. Our second winner is... Mauricio Ventura, such great, so much great knowledge, thank you. Our third winner is... Sherry Campbell, 
Love starting my week with Paul and his guests. These podcasts are fire. And our fourth and final winner is... Tired Trade Winds. Have the right perspective rather than temporary satisfaction. Guys, it's that simple. All you gotta do is just leave a comment and you can win some free leads. Congratulations to our winners. Get in contact with Victoria. Her phone number is gonna be right over here somewhere. And guys, again, it's that simple. Just leave a comment and you can win some leads that could, you know, it's free business. It's free money, almost. You know what I mean? So leave a comment. You'll be honored to win. We'll see you next week. Take care.